Hello everyone and welcome to the Full Moon in Sagittarius releasing practice for, well, it's for June 16th. The Full Moon is actually June 17th tomorrow, so we're just coming in a, a day ahead. Thank you for joining me. I'm getting started a little bit late, a little bit of technical issues with our setup today. It was a little bit different, so I had to deal with that. But thank you. It's been a while. A couple of weeks since the new moon, I think. <laughs> hope everyone is doing well today. I'm going to refresh the feed real quick so I can pull the broadcast up in my browser in case there are questions or participation from anyone who's joining us live. Let me refresh it again because I refreshed it once. It didn't seem like there we have a broadcast. So thanks for joining me the full moon in Sagittarius. I haven't been excited about this one. I don't know about y'all. I think this Mercury Saturn opposition has just like I have no motivation for today whatsoever. <laughs> I hope none of the rest of you are feeling that way, but that's certainly how I feel. But welcome. So I'm Phaedra. I'm the artist and astrologer of Mystic Physic Astrology. For those of you who might be new to the group, if you don't know me, um, I use Western Sidereal Astrology here in my practice to really kind of help you reconnect with your soul purpose and remember why you came to begin with. And really, um, the, the idea behind these broadcasts is to provide guidance for you on how you can consciously use the energy of the transiting planets to really kind of affect your life in a positive way. And so you will need to know your sidereal sign placements for this practice. We're using a Fagan Bradley Zodiac. There's an online calculator that you can use for free. I will go ahead and paste that into the comments, maybe. Let's see, Danielle, you're here. It's good to have you. I see you. My little notification just kind of popped up and my browser squished so small. There's no comment box. So let's see. And, and there we go. Calculator. If you need it, we're working with your sidereal ascendant, but you can also do this practice with your sun sign and get, you know, twice as much bang for your buck, so to speak. But thank you for joining me live. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to have a closer look at the Sagittarius archetype and Sagittarius themes. How, that way you can kind of get a feel for which ones are most relevant, active for you right now. Um, and then I want you to take a closer look at where you have been staying small and playing small. Um, the idea is we're going to kind of examine whether or not we might have some old outmoded beliefs uh, or ideals around themes relevant to the house that Sagittarius occupies in the natal chart uh, and just kind of let go of those, especially ones that aren't serving us any longer. They're not serving your highest and best good, right? Let's let go of that crap and make room for something new to come in so you kind of open your life to growth, to new experiences, to things that are outside of your comfort zone, right? Because that's, that's where the magic happens, let's face it, right? So welcome. What we're going to do um, on tonight's broadcast, we're going to approach this in kind of a, a three-part uh, approach. I'm going to go over initially a little bit about this current full moon, what we need to know about it, other than uh, yuck, I really don't care for it much. Uh, I don't like the next one much either, so it is what it is. Um, but we're going to talk about it a little bit more in depth so you kind of get a feel for what energies are active right now, what we're working with. Then we'll talk about what house this is falling in for each of you by rising sign in the second part of our broadcast. And that way, if you're not familiar with the houses and the themes of each house, you'll get a refresher. And then in the third part, what we'll do is we'll explore specifically Sagittarius themes and Sagittarius archetypes. Uh, and then we'll also go over some prompts to just kind of get, get you thinking about what what this is time to move past. I really don't like this particular full <laughs> moon personally. I just think there's a lot of mess going on astrologically with it at the same time. Um, and I also want to remind you we're in, we're in eclipse season. Our July eclipses are coming up before we know it. And so don't forget to be watching for news from uh, the July lunar eclipse, especially for those of you who might be affected because that could be coming. The 14th and 15th are the days that I had kind of uh, identified for you as to uh, days to keep an eye on if you are affected by the July 16th 
uh, full moon lunar eclipse. Um, you may be noticing a little bit of tension in the houses that the July eclipse are activating, and that is totally normal. Uh, the tension will mostly be over by the end of August, mid-September-ish, because the eclipses will have run their course. But we're feeling it right now because we're just two weeks out from the new moon one and, and four weeks out from the full moon uh, eclipse in July, and the full moon one is what we're feeling right now, some of us, potentially. Um, this particular full moon is kind of sandwiched in between some uncomfortable oppositions uh mercury opposing saturn retrograde right now as the sun is entering gemini um so that one's kind of about maybe not being able to uh think ahead or move forward or adapt to a change in plans um, and so you may need to just give that a little bit more time for something to become more clear, especially if uh, Eclipse news is on the horizon for you personally. You maybe just want to give some time for that news to arrive so that you can make a better, more informed decision. Um, and that news could be coming to light near the 16th, and, and it may alter how you understand a situation or a circumstance that you're facing right now. Um, so it may not be really the best time to make decisions, uh, I also don't necessarily like this full moon as a good time for finishing up projects or, you know, giving birth to things that are important to you just because there's some wacky energy going on. Next month isn't much better because we're in the middle of eclipse season and we'll have Mercury retrograde. So my best advice to you is if you don't have anything urgent that you need to finish up right now that's important, just put it off. Uh, use these next couple of full moons to let what comes to you come information wise, let events transpire because events will be happening that could change how you would normally respond to whatever you're facing. Let that all wash out. Use the full moons as an opportunity to take a closer look at what you just need to energetically let go of rather than trying to do the work in the physical world, unless you have to. If you have to, you have to, and that's life. Uh, but if you have things going on that you can kind of kick the can on, maybe, for a month or two, I would consider kicking that can. Like, don't rush things, uh, because you may be better positioned to move forward and to finish and finalize what you have going on right now once we move through July. Because, you know, full moons, retrogrades, yuck. Anyway. So that's that. Uh, that's what I really wanted to make sure that you knew. So we have the Mars-Saturn opposition active today. We have Mercury conjoining Mars just as the full moon is hitting. And that Mercury-Mars conjunction is going to oppose Pluto retrograde just coming out of the full moon. So we have this dynamic of tension, potentially of conflict, of power struggle, um, all at the same time, the ruler of the full moon is retrograde, Jupiter, of course, retrograde in sidereal Scorpio uh, with a square to Neptune. So if you do have to finish things up right now at this full moon, just know that the immediate, the, the outcome, like the final outcome of whatever it is, however it's really ultimately going to turn out, might not be immediately clear, might not become clear until later. If you decide to kick the can and wait until next month's full moon, um, you're in a situation where you may have to go back and make adjustments to whatever you finish up next month near the full moon. So just kind of keep both of those dynamics in mind as we move into July, okay? Uh, so it could be a little bit difficult to navigate. Um, Take your time, hold off. If you don't have to act, don't act. That would be my best suggestion, okay? And pay attention to whatever news the eclipse might be bringing you. So stalling tactics, this could be a good time for stalling tactics, okay? Especially if you have to make an important decision or take a significant course of action. Uh, just try to buy yourself some time for whatever news that's coming to you to come to light. Uh, in part because we have uh, Jupiter and Neptune squaring each other, and in part because we have the eclipses active, and eclipses are outstanding for revealing hidden information, for revealing secrets, for bringing out something that you weren't aware of, okay? Um, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, but like I said, it's kind of a mess. Um, if you have to go for it, 
but if you don't have to, try and avoid it. Um, but I think what we'll do now at this point is move into part two of our broadcast where we'll go over uh, the houses and themes of each house by rising sign. So for those of you who know this stuff, if you want to like, you know, take an inter intermission and go grab a snack, you can. Uh, and what we'll do for the rest of us is just kind of dive right in. Uh, but before we dive right in, I want to call out one thing to keep in mind about this full moon is that this is a really powerful opportunity to transform your thinking around some problem you may be facing, some situation or circumstance that you're dealing with in your Sagittarius house or in the house axis that Gemini and Sagittarius occupy in your serial natal chart. So look at this as an opportunity to potentially change your mind, although I wouldn't make any decisions right now. I would just be open to that information, but use it as an opportunity to see something in a new light, I guess would be my main point. So take advantage of the full moon, at least for that, if for nothing else, that it is a really powerful opportunity to transform your thinking around something that you're dealing with, especially related to Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. 